So today we're continuing in our summer in the Psalms. How many have been enjoying summer in the Psalms so far? And today we'll be looking at Psalm 40 specifically, one of my favorites. And uh, so let's read Psalm 40 verses 1 to 5. This is for the, it says, for the choir director, a Psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Amen? Amen. So why are the Psalms important? From the beginning of time, God has always been longing for relationship with us. Deep relationship. The Psalms are our manuscript for what pure and honest conversation and singing with our Creator looks and sounds like. The Psalms give us permission to approach God with the messiness and complications of our lives. Our God is the God who sees and feels, and the Psalms reflect this, reaching into our very lives today, even right now, this morning. Can you feel it? They are as current as ever. These songs are full of emotion, set to melody and rhythm to help us memorize the truths of God. How many know that melodies help us memorize? Yeah? Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Yes, right. It's very, it helps us a lot. So they, they are the blueprint as to how we should worship, encouraging us to offer a sacrifice of praise with exuberance and passion, singing, waiting, shouting, dancing, the lifting of our hands have been life-giving practices that we as the body of Christ have been adopted for centuries. And even though the Psalms are full of intense emotion and grieving at times, They also ultimately offer hope and joy in the middle of our battles and storms. This is how I fight my battles. Amen. So verse 1, it says, waiting for God. It says this, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. He turned to me and heard my cry. So what does waiting mean exactly in this passage? And how does it apply to us today as Christ followers? So I took a look at the original language for this word waiting, and the word linger comes up. Oxford Dictionary defines the word linger as to stay in a place longer than necessary because of a reluctance to leave. I like to say holy tenacity. We don't just wait on God, we linger. We patiently wait. I think patiently here is probably the key word in this verse. David is reinforcing the importance of waiting by adding this word patiently. And practicing patience is difficult, amen? We live in a culture where patiently waiting is seemingly becoming less and less of a priority. Attention spans have diminished. Efficiency and hard work are rightly celebrated, yet patience is rarely applauded and at times even ridiculed. Edward Bounds, he says this, The goal of prayer is the ear of God, a goal that can only be reached by patient and continued continued and continuous waiting upon him, pouring out our hearts to him and permitting him to speak to us. We cannot work up or manufacture patience. It is a fruit of the Spirit. And some of you know that I love songwriting and Um, I love getting in the dirt with each lyric, melody, rhythm, groove, riff, and sometimes a song will just be in the air, and it's just received in a matter of moments, and it's a wonderful thing, but it doesn't happen like that very often. It takes waiting. Sometimes it takes hours. Sometimes it takes weeks and even years. And uh, Leonard Cohen, the great Canadian songwriter, he wrote a masterpiece song called Hallelujah. You heard of it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, he started with a difficult songwriting process of waiting. 
He reportedly wrote around 80 verses for this song. And in one writing session, he was reduced to banging his head on the floor. He later said to find that song, that urgent song, takes a lot of versions and a lot of work and a lot of sweat. After the song was released, it then took another 15 years of waiting for the song to find its ultimate audience, mainly in part to the release of the movie Shrek in 2001. Do you remember that movie? Where do we need waiting and patience in our lives? Our families, friends, careers, marriages, health. Let's invite the Spirit into these relationships and situations by waiting on God. Amen? So how else do we wait on God? And here's a good time to take notes if you're taking notes. Waiting is surrendering, giving up our control, and surrendering, surrendering our situations to God. Waiting is trusting, trusting that God is working out all things for our good, giving him the burden of our worry and concern. Waiting is seeking, seeking out the word of the Lord over our lives and situations through study and prophetic ministry. Waiting is an investigation, a prayer to the Lord to search our hearts for any healing that needs to take place. I like to sing when I share the scriptures. Is that okay? And um, we're going to sing in a second here, but there was a time where I was busy in the studio waiting for the right arrangement. And, and my daughter, Emma, she's at Seton this morning. Um, she came into my, my studio when she was about five, five or six years old. And she said, hey, Dad, can I help? And I was focused, you know. Sometimes we're really focused on our work and we, want it, we don't want to be interrupted. But this felt like a holy moment. And I said, yeah, come on, Emma, let's, 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 let's work together here. So he's, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm writing a song. And she said, well, I can help with that. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So, you know, um, I thought, you know, I was trying to be serious and intentional, but sometimes it takes childlike faith, amen? So I said, yeah, let's do this. And uh, so I told her about the song we were writing, and it was a song for prodigals, for, for those who have walked away from God, walked away from the church. And she said, oh, Daddy, I feel like Jesus is saying, Fly, my son, fly into my arms. I'm like, yep, that's the one. <laughs> and um, so it was really cool because we, we would sing this song at different events, and, and she would come up as a you know, five- or six-year-old and sing this song with me, and it was a very powerful, special moment. And uh, so we're going to sing that during this next song as well. But Jenny, my wife Jenny and I, we, we wrote a song called I Will Wait on You, Lord. And it was during a very difficult time of waiting, and we needed the Lord's guidance. So can I sing it over you today? Is that all right? All right. So Father, would you just minister over our hearts, Lord, through music this morning? In Jesus' name. Father, I feel weak I'm really tired A little Incomplete This battered soldier Needs to hold your hand Been fighting really hard Trying to take the land So teach me now How to Lay it down so your dreams can rise again. And here I am, knowing the rest will come as I wait upon you, Lord. I will wait on you, Lord. I will wait. On you, Lord, I will wait on you, Lord. I fly like the eagle as I rest in your shadow. I will wait. 
Jenny wrote this line. I love this line. I want to run with what you've given me. I want to fly with what you see in me. But I can't run without knowing rest. And I can't fly without doing less. Teach me now how to lay it down so your dreams can rise again. And here I am knowing the rest will come as I wait upon you, Lord. I will wait on you, Lord. I will wait on you, Lord. I will wait on you, Lord. I'll fly like the eagle as I rest in your shadow. I will wait. Let's sing that together. I will wait. I will wait on you, Lord. I will wait on you, Lord. I will wait on you, Lord. I'll fly like the eagle as I rest in your shadow. I will wait. And I believe he's saying over us this morning, he's inviting us to fly with him. Sing and fly, my son. Fly into my arms. Fly. My daughter, fly into my arms. Amen. Fly, my son, fly into my arms. Fly, my daughter. Fly into my arms, we will fly. We'll fly with you, Jesus, as we wait on you. Amen. second part it says God is our lifter he lifted me out of the pit of despair out of the mud and the mire he set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along our family we love the outdoors and we love to get out into the outdoors and take our off-road vehicles out into the the forest and Sometimes we get adventurous and try to go through the deep mud. Anybody ever done that before? And, and uh, sometimes we'll get stuck in the mud. And it can be frustrating, but it feels so good to get back on solid ground. Amen? And that's what I love about the church. I love the gatherings. I love how we come together to sing. And it's like a recalibration of our hearts where the Lord sets our feet on solid ground. And we minister to him through song. We minister to one another through prayer and prophetic ministry. And I believe he's doing that here this morning. And Jesus said in John 16 that in this world, we will have troubles, but he has overcome the world. This is good news, church. And there are times in our lives where we are at a loss for what to do next. The good news is that God is our lifter and he will pull us out of the pit. Let's be patient, church surrendering all the things that we cannot do to our God. 
We are called to surrender our burdens and our worry. And I want to sing this song over you as well. This was, this was written, you know, we, we moved from Langley, B.C. about 14 years ago, and our kids were really young and adjusting to a new city. You know, parents in the room moving to a new city. It can be difficult. And, and we were at a loss for what to do next. The kids weren't getting settled in school. And, and uh, so we sat down at the piano, and you guys might know this one too, so you got to sing along, all right? When the melodies are gone And it's hard to sing your song I worship I worship you When it seems like fear has won And the storms outshine the sun I worship I worship you When the arrows fly my way in the night when the fires rage and questions arise you take my fear replacing it with love you hold me close I learn to trust I worship you I worship you If it seems I've lost my way And there's nothing left to say I worship I worship you If my heart is led astray And the feelings go away I worship I worship you I will lift my hands and not be afraid For I know that you are leading the way you take my fear, replacing it with love. You hold me close, and here I learn to trust. I worship you. worship you here's the key right here singing I surrender I surrender all to you all the things I cannot do I'm giving over everything as I wait my spirit sings, amen. I surrender all to you. All the things I cannot do. I'm giving over everything. As I wait, my spirit I surrender all I surrender all All to Thee, my blessed Savior I surrender all Let's sing it again, sing it a little louder, sing I surrender all All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. 
One more time, sing. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Here right now, here today, Lord, we surrender all of our burdens, knowing that you can make a way. Lord, you specialize on what seems impossible, God. You laugh at impossibilities, God. You will make a way for the wayward son, the wayward daughter, the wayward friend, family member, neighborhood, uh, neighbor, God. In Jesus' name, Lord, you can make a way. So we surrender our burdens to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Finally, verse, verses three to five, it says, he has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. And the message version brilliantly says it like this. He taught me how to sing the latest God song, a praise song to our God. More and more people are seeing this. They enter the mystery, abandoning themselves to God. Why sing a new song, church? What's, why should we sing a new song? We have thousands and thousands of great songs that the church has been singing for centuries. Well, one of the names of our God is the creator. Creativity is in his name, in his very nature. The scriptures don't say, sing to the Lord an old song. Although there is a time and a place to remember his goodness by singing the classics. Amen. Scriptures, however, do repeatedly implore us to sing a new song to the Lord. We all have preferences. Would you agree? But the Lord's preference here is the singing of a new song, the lifting of our hands, the shouting, the, the, the dancing. It would be easier for me as a worship pastor and for the worship leaders of this house to sing songs that are tried and true, that we know will get the best reaction. But do you know what, First Assembly? This church is resilient. They will dive into the new song. And we as a mandate, we have, a, we have this mandate to sing a new song to the Lord, and we believe that Canada has a song. Amen? And there's something powerful about coming together as a church, songwriters, seeking the Lord, asking, where are you leading the church in the next few months or the next few years? And writing a song into that. You know, uh, most of us would know the song, The Church Will Rise. Coming out of the pandemic, that was a very important song for our church. Amen? The church will rise. The best days of the church are ahead. We believe it. And this is why we record songs. This is why... You know, Tehillah worship is not just a Monday night thing. Tehillah worship is the worship ministry of this house. Did you know that? And the albums that we release are meant to be put into your cars and your headphones throughout the week to encounter God with the songs of this house. So when we come together early, on time, we're ready to go. Amen? This, this, this idea of singing a new song, you know, often a worship leader will say, let's take a moment and just sing out our own song in, an, in, in the worship time. And there's a, there's a church in Watford, England called Soul Survivor. And in the late 90s, they noticed that there was something just a little bit off about their worship. They, something wasn't seeming the way it used to be, wasn't connecting, you know, seemingly with the Lord and with the, with, with the church. So the leadership got together and they said, you know what, we think the worship's too quiet. We're going to turn the worship up. And that should do it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's probably what it is. It's just too quiet in here. So Sunday comes along, and they turn it, they turn it up. And same thing, nothing changed. So they get back together that week, and they say, well, maybe, maybe the worship was too, too loud from the beginning. Let's make it quieter than it was even before. Again, nothing really changed. So the leadership got together, and they said, do you know what? We're not going to have the band open up the service anymore. We're actually just going to invite people to come to the front 
and just sing out a new song to the Lord to recalibrate. Three of the worship leaders said, we're out. Bye-bye. We're gone. But what happened was a guy called Matt Redman, who you guys may have heard of. He's written loads of songs. That we, sing, we sing a lot of them here. In that time, week after week, there was just a few people at the front at the, at one, at the beginning. Week after week, it grew, and the heart of worship was birthed in that time. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come. You guys know that one? I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Amen. Andrew Fletcher, a Scottish writer, politician, famously said, let me make the songs of a nation, and I care not who makes its laws. He simply meant this, that you cannot reform the culture of any church, city, or country without the help of a lyric Psalm, song, or poem. Would we be even more open to new songs, church? Amen. We're, we're continuing to record. We've got a, a live worship album this November that we're going to release again. And, uh, or, or sorry, brand new songs. And the Church Will Rise has been out for about a year. And hopefully it's blessing you all. Um, but we, we're going to do another one. We're going to record it on a Sunday just like this. And a Monday. So I encourage you, come prepared knowing, trying to, to engage in new songs. We've been singing them before the recording as well, so they won't be completely brand new. But the reason we do this is to, is to bless God, number one, and prophetically announce where we're going as a church. Sound good? You know, sometimes as a worship pastor, I hear things like, I felt God ministering when that song was sung, or when that person was leading worship, um, or I hear this sometimes too, I didn't really get anything out of worship today. And no shame here this morning, friends. I've been there myself. And we need, however, to remind ourselves that corporate worship is not for us. It's for God. And we're, we, we gather to minister to God's heart. That's why we're here today. It's not at a summer routine. It's, we are on mission as a church. And the number one mission is to minister to the Lord's heart. And everything else is added unto that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul. In Jesus' name. And so feel, feelings, friends, are notorious liars. We can't go on our feelings. And Eugene Peterson, he says this. Feelings are great liars. If Christians worshipped only when they felt like it, there would be precious little worship. We think that if we don't feel something, there can be no authenticity in doing it. But the wisdom of God says something different that we can act ourselves into a new way of feeling much quicker than we can feel ourselves into a new way of acting. Amen? Worship is an act that develops feelings for God, not a feeling for God that is expressed in an act of worship. So when you're in a worship gathering anywhere, if you're not feeling connected with the song or in the moment, that's the time where we press in. That's the time where we sing a little louder. Amen? And I love the fact that our church sings with passion. We don't wait to feel or sense anything as we are in love with Jesus. And we just simply want to minister to him. Amen. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up in this time. We're going to, we're going to worship with the band. So in summary, guys, here, here are our takeaways, okay? Number one, we wait on the Lord. Be patient. Keep waiting. Number two, remember that he is our lifter. Number three, as we wait, we sing. And you might say, I can't sing, Michael. It doesn't matter, friends. It doesn't matter if you can't sing. He's listening to your heart. Emma, my, my daughter, when she was even younger than five, she was three, probably three or four, and, and uh, she looked up at me. She lifted her hands up to me, looking right in my eyes, and she says, Oh, Daddy, you're my little princess. (laughs) 
And I thought, well, you're a little off, but I loved it. I loved every moment of it because it was from her heart. It doesn't matter if you sound good, friends. A.W. Tozer says this, I can't sing a lick, but that's nobody's business. God listens when I sing to him, and he thinks I am an opera star. Amen.